Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over binary search tree. So recall the binary search algorithm. The binary search algorithm is a search algorithm which we can perform on sorted sequences. So here we have a sorted array from three to 100. And then if we want to search, let's say we want to call this method called contain. The contains method is going to return true if 100 is in the array and false otherwise. So before binary search, we could just perform a linear scan, which is going to cost O of n. But of course, if we have a sorted array, then we can perform binary search, which checks the array, which performs the search in log n time. In binary search, you create three pointers, low, medium, high. And then we ask if the value that we're searching for is equal to the value at the middle. So is 100 equal to 56? No. So because it's sorted, we know that the value, if it does exist, is going to exist in the right half of the array. So we set L to now point to where M is, M plus 1. So we do that. So now our search space is half of the array. We just cut the search space in half. And now we ask if 84 is equal to 100 because 84 is at the middle index. It's not. So that means we know the search space is the upper half of the of the pointer range. So we set L equal to M plus 1. And we recalculate M middle to be the middle index of low and high. We now ask if 92 is equal to 100, and it's not. So we have to look in the upper half of the search space again. So we move our pointers. And then finally, our pointers are on one element of the array, which is 100. And 100 equals 100. That is true. So we return true for the entire search method. So this is great. This performs in logarithmic time, which is really fast. It's the second fastest next to constant. But what happens if we want to insert into our array when we want to mutate? Let's say we want to insert 43. To insert 43, because this is a sorted array, we have to scan the array for the correct spot to insert it so we maintain the sorted order. This costs O of n. So is it possible to still have log n retrievals, which is really searching like we had before, but also with insertions and deletions, maintain that to be logarithmic? And the answer is yes. And the solution to that is binary search trees. So if you're familiar with just a regular binary tree, a binary tree is a tree where every node has at most two children. And on top of that, binary search trees are binary trees that satisfy the BST invariant. The BST invariant is as follows. The key of every node is strictly greater than all keys to its left and strictly greater than all keys to its right. So you see in the figure to the right that for every node, it's all the nodes in its left subtree are all less than the node and all the nodes in the right subtree are greater than the node. The BST invariant gives us a sorted structure. So we can still do search in log n time. Let's say we wanted to search for 161. So we start at the root and we check to see if 161 is equal to 137. It is not equal, so we haven't found our node. So we now need to check if we need to recurse into the left or right subtree. 161 is greater than 137, so we already know that it's not going to exist in the left side of the subtree because only nodes that have values less than 137 live in the left subtree. So we're going to check the right subtree. So we're going to move to the right child. We check to see if the current node that we're pointing at is equal to the value that we're looking for, but 271 does not equal 161. So now we have to check to see if we need to look into the left subtree, the right subtree. Since 161 is less than 271, we need to check the left subtree. Finally, the node that we're at is equal to the value that we're looking for, so you can return true for the search method. So notice that at each step, we cut the search space in half, so you can tell that the runtime is logarithmic. And we finally get our match. So searching in a binary search tree is log n because we trace a path down the tree. And because our tree grows exponentially, the height of our tree is log n. At each step, we are cutting the search space in half, and we're cursing one level down. So the entire runtime is log n. Now let's go into insertion. The whole problem that we had was that with sorted arrays, it was a linear amount of time because we had to find the correct spot to insert. So let's see if the BST really inserts in log n. Let's say you want to insert 166. So we're at the root node and we need to maintain the BST invariant. So because 166 is greater than 137, we need to insert it somewhere to the right child, into the right subtree. 
we don't know where, but we're just going to recurse. So now we're at 271 and 166 is less than 271. So we have to insert it into the left subtree. If we insert it into the right, it would violate the BST invariant. We now want to insert 166 at this subtree rooted at 161. And we see that 166 is greater than 161. So we go to the left. We see that the node we're at is null. So we can insert the 166 node finally and then link the pointers to the parent. See that insertion is also log n because we're just tracing a path down the tree and the height of the tree is log n. Deletion is also logarithmic. All we do is trace a path down to the node we want to delete and remove it from the tree. Let's say we wanted to delete 161. So it's not the node with blue, with blue line circles, it's the node above that right here, 161. So the first step in deleting is to find the node to delete, and that's going to take log n time because in the worst case, we're tracing a path down the entire tree, and we get to 161. So there's a few cases of deletion. This is the first one. The first case is when the node that we want to delete, let's say this is node z, it has, for the left child, it's null, and the right child, there is a right child. So there's only a right child. Basically, we can replace the node that we wanted to delete with the right child because the right child is the successor of the deleted node. So we just replace R with Z. To delete this, we would just place 166 and replace it with 161. And you'll see that the binary search tree invariant still holds because technically this 166 is less than 271 because all of the children in the left subtree have to have values smaller than 271, but we can still replace it with 161 because it is its successor. And, and the same thing applies when the node to be deleted, let's say Z, only has a left child. We can just replace the, the Z with the left child itself. So this is the most simple case. When the node to be deleted only has one child, we just do the replace with the single child. The second case is when the node to be deleted has two children and the right child does not have a left child. So this means that the successor of seven is the right child. Because if you can imagine if there was nodes below nine, then the successor of the node right after seven in terms of the in order traversal or like the node that comes after seven in terms of just values would actually not be nine. It would be something down here because nine could have eight. So let's say nine had a child of eight, the left child of eight, then the successor of seven would be eight. So this is the simple case when there's two children of the node to be deleted and the right child does not have any left ch children or subtree. So that means the direct successor of seven is just the right child. So what we can do is we would move nine up right here, like the diagram below, the node to be deleted is Z, and we just move the right child up and replace Z. In the left figure, the new binary search tree would be nine and then 11, right, 14 right here, and then this would not change. The final case is when there are still two children, but the right child of the node to be deleted actually has a subtree. So that means the direct successor of 137 is somewhere somewhere in here. So what we do is if you look in the figure to the right is that we take the smallest element in the left subtree of the right child. So the smallest element in the left subtree of the right child is the successor of Z. So we replace Y and we place it in Z, but then Y needs to be replaced with X. So this is what we do. We, we replace, we put X where Y is and we put Y where Z is and this is the new the new shape. So looking at here, let's say we wanted to delete 137. There's two children, and the right child actually has a left subtree. So we cannot replace 137 directly with 271. Notice that if we do that, 271, then the new binary search tree that, we, that would result violates our invariant because 161 and 166 are to the right. So we need to replace this directly with its direct success successor. So we want to find the minimum node in the left subtree of the right child of the originally deleted node. So we check and we see that's 161. So we're going to replace 137 with 161 and place that there. And then we're going to, of course, replace 161 with 166. So we do that. And this is the resulting binary search tree. This is the story so far. With our sorted arrays, we saw that we got logarithmic searching, but then insertion and deletion is linear. With binary search trees, we have logarithmic operations throughout. But wait a minute. Binary search tree operations trace paths down these trees. That's why we get logarithmic runtimes. But what if our trees grew into weird shapes? The figure below is a valid binary search tree because every node because every node satisfies the BST invariant. Every node in the love subtree is less than the current the node 
and every node in the right subtree is greater than the current node. So here there's no left sub subtrees at all and there's only right subtrees, but notice that this still, still does not violate the BST invariant. We have every node's right subtree is greater than the actual node. So this is called a degenerate binary search tree. And when we have structures like these, searching, insertion, and deletion now become O of n instead of log n. So really, the operations of a BST cost O of h, where h is the height of the tree. And h in the worst case is O of n, and the best case is log n. So the story so far is really that binary search tree operations run in O of h. So this is the new problem that we want to solve. The new problem is that we want to keep the height of the tree balanced, and we don't want to keep it unbalanced like this right tree right here. We want to keep h to be log n, so we want it for it to grow exponentially instead of n. So this is where we are going in the next video. We're going to go over these data structures called self-balancing binary source trees, such that whenever you mutate them, insert and delete, the data structure itself is going to maintain the height of the tree and make sure it's balanced. And because of that, all of these operations will be logarithmic. So that was it for binary search trees. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll go over self-balancing binary search trees. See you then.